welcome to Cooking Caribbean. On today's show, we sample the popular local seafood cuisine of Trinidad's sister isle, Tobago. Tobago is a very small island of about 120 square miles with a population of 50,000 and is located some 20 miles off the northeast coast of Trinidad. Unlike Trinidad, Tobago was never colonized by Spain as it was found to be lacking in precious metals. However, it became a haven for pirates, setting the scene for a turbulent history. For centuries, this island was constantly fought over by the Dutch, French, and the British, changing hands over 25 times. Finally, in 1803, the British succeeded in claiming the island as their own, and in 1888, politically united Trinidad and Tobago. capital of Scarborough, you will find Fort King George. It was built in 1780 and is the best preserved fort on the island. It serves as a tourist attraction and also as a reminder of Tobago's tumultuous past. Today, Tobago offers serenity and harmony with a great ecological diversity. Having the world's first nature reserve, it is home to a wide and unusual variety of flora and fauna. On the coast, there's an abundance of unspoiled white sand beaches with dramatic ocean views of both the Atlantic Ocean and the Caribbean Sea. Its colorful and vibrant coral reefs can be found teeming with schools of exotic fish. It's no wonder that Tobago is a jewel in the chain of Caribbean islands. With its simple, unpretentious charm, Tobago continues to surprise you and its local cuisine is no exception. Castara, a fishing village located on the northwestern part of the island, is a popular tourist destination and also a place to have the best and heartiest Tobagonian fish broth. To make a fish broth, you first need a fish. This, of course, is never a problem here in Castara. A freshly caught kingfish is brought in for cleaning. With a dexterous hand, scales are removed by scraping its skin with a sharp knife. Various unwanted parts are then cut off. The fish is then thinly sliced. Slices are washed and cleaned in lime water to remove the fresh smell. The cleaned fish is now ready for seasoning.
a wood burning fire is started. Twigs are split and placed inside a metal burner. Lemons are squeezed and their juices are added to the fish for flavor. Freshly picked cilantro leaves, also called bandana, are first added. Onions, sive, pimento peppers and garlic are also used. These freshly picked seasonings are cut up and used to marinate the fish. Salt is added. Processed seasoning is poured in to enhance the flavor. Once the fish has been seasoned, it is set aside. The provisions for the broth are prepared. Pumpkin is peeled. It is cut into sizable pieces. Potato is peeled and cut up into cubes. Green bananas are skinned. These provisions are immediately placed in water once they are peeled. A pot is placed on the burner to get hot. Once the pot is heated, water is poured in. As soon as the water becomes hot, all the provisions are added. They are set to boil with fresh seasonings. Sticks of ginger are added. The last ingredient to be added is the marinated kingfish. The pot is now stirred to ensure an even distribution of flavor. The broth is stirred occasionally as the meal is left to cook for approximately 20 to 30 minutes. A taste of the broth reveals that it is good and ready for serving. The broth is best served hot and makes a delicious meal that everyone can enjoy. Now you've heard of horse racing or even dog racing, but have you ever heard of crab racing? Almost 75 years ago, an eccentric form of racing involving crabs started in a small fishing village in Tobago called Buku Village. Over the years, it has drawn so much attention and participation that it has even replaced horse racing on the island. Crab races are run sideways, as this is generally the natural way a crab moves. The crabs are kept on a string and are guided by their owners. Today, crab races are held all over the island and generate quite a hilarious atmosphere. Prizes are given to the winning crab owners. The losing crabs, well, they go off in style. In Tobago's favorite dish, curry crab and dumplings. Curried crab and dumplings is a very easy meal to prepare. Crabs are generally sold bounded. They need to be loosened for their preparation. Taking care not to get one's fingers caught in the large pincers, 
They are carefully held and their dense protective back shells are removed. Their underside shell is also removed. The pointed ends of their legs are broken off. Taking care not to get one's fingers caught in its grasp, the large pincer or gandhi as it's locally called is severed. The crab is then cut in half. The crabs are properly cleaned with a small brush beneath running water. They are further washed in lime juice. After cleaning, salt, black pepper, along with some fresh seasonings such as garlic, diced sive and onions are added. The crabs are gently tossed with their seasonings. Curry powder is mixed with water to a medium consistency and is set aside. oil is poured into an already heated pot. Once the oil has become hot, a portion of various fresh cut seasonings such as onions, chive, pimento peppers and garlic are added and quickly turned about. The curry mixture is now poured in and stirred around. This makes a wonderfully flavored sauce. The crabs are placed in this curry sauce and turned until they have all been coated. A generous quantity of coconut milk is poured in until the crabs are submerged. The milk is slowly stirred until it is mixed in. The remainder of the seasonings are added along with a hot pepper and turned about. The pot is covered and the crabs are left to boil in this rich sauce for 20 minutes. The dumplings that will accompany the crab is now prepared. This is done very simply. Flour, water and salt are combined and kneaded into a smooth dough. The dough is divided into balls. These balls are rolled flat into a circular shape and then divided. They are placed into a pot of boiling water and left to cook for 15 minutes. The cooked dumplings will have a very light grey colour, an indication that it is ready for serving. Curry crab and dumplings are best enjoyed hot. It is absolutely delicious. I would have everyone asking for more.
Kastara is a very close-knit community and every weekend they get together to bake their traditional Saturday bread at the local mud oven. With ingredients in hand, many families consisting of both the young and old make their way through the village to the local baking centre. Sometimes the dough is prepared in advance and transported just for baking. The mud oven is first prepared. Coconut shells are first put into the oven, as this will burn for a long time. Dry pieces of wood are placed on the top of the shells and ignited to speed up the process. Soon a roaring fire emerges and is left to burn. A number of balizi or halicornia leaves are selected and cut. They are gathered along with freshly cut riverside shrubs. The halicornia leaves are washed, cleaned and cut into smaller pieces for later use. Dough is prepared with brown sugar and salt. Preserved fruits further enhance the previously needed dough, consisting of brown sugar and salt. Previously prepared dough is cut and rolled into balls. Trays and baking tins are oiled with lard. The dough for making wheat bread is rolled and placed on oiled halakoda leaves and set aside for baking. Hops, a delicious crispy bread, is shaped into a sphere and placed on leaves where it is glazed with a mixture of sugar and water. Coconut tarts are also prepared. The sweetened grated coconut is placed on the dough which is then folded into a neat semicircular shape. The ends are pressed with a fork to ensure that the coconut filling is well secured. The riverside shrubs that have been previously cut are bounded together and used as a broom to push the burning ambers into the depths of the oven. The front portion of the oven is swept clean and cleared before use. The various breads, all rolled in leaves, are put to bake along with pies and tarts. The 
the oven is then temporarily sealed and the breads are left to be. Right, <laughs> Glazing liquids made with brown sugar and water are prepared in the meantime. After 45 minutes, the freshly baked bread, pies and tarts are removed from the oven. The leaves are peeled off and the breads are stacked. Freshly baked pies and tarts are glazed. Mm -hmm. 